this has a very interesting story. It's insane. I would be freaked out if somebody was trying to fight me with this. Damn right, I got knives here with another knife review called Lost and Found. And it should be lost, found, and gifted because that's kind of what it is that's going on here. So I'm just gonna kind of pick into all these knives here, but I'm gonna start with this guy right here. This I had for a really long time. Look how broken and messed up this thing is. The All the handle came off, everything. It's completely freaking dangerous. The lock system, everything is broken, but I've just kept it around. It's just the frame of a knife. And this is a knife that helped me realize I needed a good knife. So I always kept it around as a, a reminder that that's where it all started. And then from there, I kind of had these little guys, gas station knives are like usually like two bucks or something in a, in a gas station. Little guy right there. But this and this knife has come in useful so many times, especially this little guy right here. I would just keep it in my truck and I would just use it for any sort of little cutting task I needed. My old produce knife, this has made an appearance a couple of times. This I've had made for me and cut down from another knife because I was working at a produce store and I just wanted a knife that was that I could work to cut produce and not poke at people. Hawthorne Cutlery, when I lived up in Portland, did this for me many years ago. And what else we got here? My old Leatherman, little mini Leatherman, the kind of keychain one. It's all jammed up now. I can barely open this thing. There it goes. But yeah, this little guy has cut a lot of guitar strings and different things over the years. I've had full-size ones. They've gotten taken away from me at airports and different places. And this was just the last one that I had in the, one of my guitar cases. And it's all messed up and kind of broken. This one, uh, my wife had this around somewhere just in a drawer straight razor that kind of just really is weird and doesn't really, I don't know, straight razor. Let's see, then I got this here. Looks like an interesting knife, right? Well, it's cheap plastic knife that the back broke off of and this side stayed on and it's just a crappy, crappy, another little like $3 gas station knife that I just had around. So there's that. This is a kind of an interesting knife. It's an Ulster knife. I think I'm saying that right, but an old little knife. Not sure where I came across this or how I ended up getting it, but I picked it up somewhere along the way. That one right there. And then you got this guy here that I got from my father actually, which is, is a case knife and I ended up with it probably because he got a new one at some point but this knife is really this blade is really small and really cool and i've just always kept this around because case knives are cool and this one's really small just for the bottom of your pocket this guy here it's a silver british fruit pairing knife and i've looked it up before and it has the guy's initials on there. I got this from my stepfather, Dan, and it was his father's, and maybe his father's before, but it got handed down to me, and I really appreciate this knife. I really like it. Made of silver, very thin. You can see that pairing knife. Okay, another knife of mine that was just an old clunker. One of the blades is broken off. I have no idea how it got broken off. I think I found this in the bottom of an old toolbox that I ended up with. So there's that. Don't even know what kind of brand that is or anything there. Then there's this guy here, another one. Don't know what it is, but it's practically falling apart. I don't know if you can see that there, but... It's all rusted and broken. 
came across that somewhere. Then I got this one here, which has a really cool story. This one was found in the park by my friends Monty and Rebecca here on Balboa Park. They were walking through the park and saw it in the grass sitting there. So how it ended up in the park, they put it in a plastic bag and brought it to me. <laughs> and thank you. It's a K-Bar knife. Um, I forget what it's called, the model number, but it's a little mini K-Bar and it's really cool. It's really old and beat. Yeah, thank you Monty and Rebecca for the cool little K-Bar. This knife here was mine when I was a Boy Scout, apparently, and I think it was my dad's when he was a Boy Scout. My mom says that it was mine, but I feel like this is too old. I think it was my dad's before me. And then I remember I had it too. And I think this is the knife that I threw into some boxes as a kid. And instead of hitting the box, I hit our pachinko machine and broke the glass to it and got in a lot of trouble as a kid for doing that. And I ended up with that. Oh, come on, I can do better than that. There we go. Now, this knife here was given to me recently for my birthday by my friend Phil. It's a knife by CC Filsom Company. There's their little logo there. And this is Bone. And it's a slip joint, single bladed slip joint. Really cool. I really like this. Thank you, Phil, very much, buddy. Very kind of you. And we'll just leave that right there. See, since we're talking about birthday gifts, my friend Tim Soti had given me this one also for my birthday this past year. And it is a bird, which is by Spider Co. And it's their cheaper brand. But neither him or I had one of these. And he got it for me. And it's a little bird's eye, like the spider hole. But the bird. And it's got the compression lock on the back. It's actually really sturdy, but the interesting thing, neither one of us have any idea how to get into this knife. I don't think you're supposed to ever take it apart. Maybe you are, maybe somebody out there knows how this comes apart. Very cool knife, actually. One of the, you can't flick it open really so much, but it is a one-handed open. Really like it. Thank you, Tim. All right, this knife here, this has a very interesting story. This actually belongs to a friend of mine, P, and we believe it's made by Sid Laverence um, in 1944. It is a crazy knife. He was an American film director and creative person. If you look up his name on YouTube and stuff, on Google, you'll find a, interesting information about him. So this is a very rare, one of a kind knife, but it is insane. It's that knife with brass knuckles with a see-through plexiglass handle with black stripes as well. I would be freaked out if somebody was trying to fight me with this. This is a crazy knife, really cool story. My friend P goes to a lot of estate sales and is very knowledgeable on a lot of different topics and knew about this guy, went and bought many things of his and this was one of them. And P, knowing that I'm into knives, kind of let me borrow it for a little bit just to check out and I have to share it. All right, so P also gave me one of these, which is a more decorative ornamental knife with a brass, I believe sheath, not sharp at all, kind of letter opener thing. Now we're moving into a zone of, my mother-in-law's partner recently passed away and he collected all kinds of tools, guns, 
all kinds of stuff. He was a race car driver, builder, really fascinating guy. But he also had a bunch of knives around. And so as they were going through his things, they were kind enough to give me some of his knives. I helped go through their garage and a bunch of stuff. And my reward was pocket knives. I'm really happy to have these and keep them in the family. I don't know their stories other than what I'm gonna tell you. So these were in some of the toolboxes. Good old fashioned knife of some sort. It's not even Swiss Army, it's just the red handle. This is something else altogether. I don't know what. This was another one found in a toolbox with a broken tip. And another blade. These haven't been opened in years. Here's another one, pretty cool, of his. This was also found in an, uh, the toolbox that I came across. There's that. And then he worked for a company and they would give him knives. So this is a knife they gave him. It's like a Swiss Army knife as a screwdriver. The company was a tool company like lawnmowers and sprinklers and different things like that. And that was one of the knives that was in this little sheath here. This was another one of his knives that was just randomly in a drawer somewhere. This is like a very cheap, cheap gas station knife. I mean, the thing is just built really bad. It looks absolutely ridiculous. You can put your finger in there and it's kind of like that. An absolutely ridiculous knife, but kind of cool in its absurdity. All right, then you got, this one here was kind of a carving knife that was hanging around their house too, and she threw that into the mix. Thank you, Frida, for all these knives here. And the real gem that was given to me in this sad situation was this knife here, an old buck knife. And it's in mint condition. It says Toro on it where he worked. It's engraved there. It was a gift from the company to him. And I forget which model number this is. I looked it up. Not terribly important to tell you all the exact details of these knives. This is sharing this absurd amount of knives. And I kind of just wanted to do this episode because I knew I would never do a full review on all these knives. So I'm kind of at a point where this has to be one episode. That kind of wraps up all my knives. I've done reviews of all my knives up to this point. I'm on, this is episode 36. These are all my extra knives of gifts lost and found. I really appreciate everybody watching that is watching what we've been listening to which is this right here Gitatakwa. i don't know how to say that and he's an amazing ethiopian saxophone player i've heard him on other records before and this is one of his solo works record really great ethiopian saxophone player and we've been drinking Vice Black Current. Now, and I trashed Wild Barrel in a couple other episodes because I had the, their Razzleberry Pie and it was completely horrible. But I recently went back to the same store I bought the Razzleberry Pie. I asked the guy if I could do four different Wild Barrel drinks because I just kind of secretly felt a little bad about how, how cruel I was to Wild Barrel. So I wanted to be sure of that what I had to say about them. And I have found that I do not like their pastry sours, but their regular sours, although a bit sweet for me, are still really good. This was the pink guava. Um, this is the black currant I'm about to try. So I'm happy to report that Wild Barrel actually does make a good sour. I'm not gonna say all this bad stuff about them. But I will say that Razzleberry Pie is freaking horrible. And they have a couple of other ones that are called Pastry Sours. And I, nah, 
but a regular sour by them is actually really good. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for checking out all these lost and found knives. Remember to like and subscribe, all that stuff. And uh, I guess that's it. Adios amigos, damn right I got knives, signing out.